Hello followers and future followers. This is my little Porsche 964 Endeavor, starting as a weight exercise, putting this guy on a diet, saving what then was the target of 200 kilos, now having arrived at 298 kilos. And I'm not done yet, I got plenty of the ideas left. This time around, I wanna show you what I'm gonna do in the rear end of the car. Uh, we're going to work on getting some of the, the, the compliance in the back of the car away, changing some of the bushings to, to uni balls. And we are going to plant the car down on the ground, weigh it a first time so we know a little bit where we are. So look at that. Now, before the car can make its touchdown, feeling the ground for the first time in a very long time, it is time to do the center lock conversion of the rear. Because you remember what we did in the front? We put these huge brakes in there. We put the center lock there. We did all that conversion. Uh, today, we're going to have to do something of the same kind to the rear. Before we do that, let's look at the, the setup and uh, how that actually looks. So the 964 has a very classic setup with a rear trailing arm that sits hinged in two pivot points towards the front of the car. And this, this big trailing arm there, which is a big cast aluminum piece, this moves like a, like a hinge up and down in, in this manner. And by adjusting the, the various pieces, especially, especially this piece here, you can adjust the, the toe in and you can adjust the, the camber of this this piece so we're going to look at a little bit this one uh, what we're also going to look at is this fantastic piece here this is the uh the parking brake which uh, i'm going to give it away straight away i'm not going to keep this system i'm going to do something else with that uh, okay remove the parking brake you said well i'm actually not going to remove the parking brake i'm going to move the parking brake uh, traditionally on most cars it sits here as a drum uh, the challenge I have, which is not impossible to overcome, but I don't want to overcome it, is that that hits a, a, a drum surface here on the inside of the, the disc or the rotor. Uh, and as I change to a different rotor here, it limits a little bit what I can do. Uh, and I don't want to have that limitation, neither do I want to have all these fancy cables running all over the car and this, this lever. Uh, so I'm going to remove this and I'm going to go for a much more modern system. Uh, and there we are. We're almost to the, the core of this one. So as I said previously, this is a very traditional setup. You have these two pivot points and the whole arm moves in this manner, pivoting around these two points with the spring and the damper sitting here. Uh, and and this, this gives the wheel a very particular motion in uh, modern cars and, and everything newer than a 964, the suspension has, has a geometry that is much more sophisticated that the wheel actually goes up and down in a, in a better or more synchronized motion. This, however, gives a lot of the characteristic to the 964, which is really cool. Uh, I was at one time looking at changing this, going for something more modern, but uh, there has to be a, a limitation to the craziness as well, and this is one of the characteristics for the 964, so why change this? Um, this arm here is really what you have to, to be able to adjust this, this arm and, and this geometry. And, and, and the way this works is that you have bolts, like this bolt here, that changes the location, so it actually changes the geometry of, of this arm that ultimately changes the position of the wheel. And you have this bolt here that you see changes the length of this one. So one actually changes the, the toe out. It should be the one in the middle here, I believe. Uh, and the other one changes the, the camber. So this one changes how the, the wheel is actually tilted. Uh, I'm not gonna dig further into this one because I'm gonna change this to something much cooler, much more modern. I am gonna take this off though and get this bearing out. So let's do that. The next step is very straightforward, pushing the old bearing and the old uh, wheel hub out. 
So we're using my good old friend, the, the Workshop Press here, uh, and I have a, a really brilliant tool for, for how to really take a, a strange shape like this and, and rig it in one of these. So it's, it's just a big aluminum plate with a number of threaded holes in it, and in each one of these threaded holes you can move these, these rods, these threaded rods around, and you can find the combination where, where you support the piece in some way. As, as I've done here. So we're gonna see, I'm gonna very gently push here and we're gonna see if the bearing comes out. There it is. So I can see, th th this is always a little bit scary because you, you're so strong with this machine and uh, this is very expensive stuff, you really don't wanna break this. Uh, there we go, the divorce is complete. Uh, before we continue, I will just take the bearing off of this one. And since this is something I think is fun, I'll show you how I do this. Uh, usually what I do is I just stack up with, with sockets. Uh, then I take another one inside of there, and then I put a bolt inside there so I have something to press on. Then you take your claws or clamps or whatever you want to call them. I like to be brutal with this, so I always do this. And that's an extremely convenient way of taking that off. With this particular hub, there are small little slots there where you can put one of these guys in. So for this particular one, or for this particular hub, it's usually really easy to get this off. Uh, for some of the other hubs, you don't have those slots, and then it is extremely difficult to get them off. Yeah. So, that's how you take one of these off. When okay, moving on to the next piece, which is the, uh, the assembly point here, the one that assembles to the car, just over there. Uh, this one in the original setup has like a rubber bush here. Have a look at this. Uh, so it sits there, and this, uh, this rubber bush is, is really what transfers the, the forces from this into the car. And in the application that I'm aiming for, being really a track dedication, you don't want to have this rubber. Because what happens is that when you have a lot of forces on the wheel here, and this pushes this one inwards or outwards, actually when this one flexes, it changes the toe angle. And, and this means that the rear of the car is not going to be completely consistent. And you can sometimes feel this. You can sometimes feel this as you drive really hard in a corner and, and the car changes balance a little bit. It will wiggle a little bit like this. And that can be many things, of course. It could also be this. So I'm going for a setup that has one of this. So this is a uniball. You see there, it's a mechanical bush instead that has zero clearance. Uh, this one is from FVD in Germany. Uh, it's really nice quality. I was very surprised when I got it. Uh, I'm going to take this one apart. I'm going to take this one out so that I can put this one in. And then we see how that looks. And getting this guy out seems to be pretty much a mess. I uh, have taken the one on the other side out and I can confirm it is really a mess. Uh, so I'm starting on the second one now. I've done a little bit of prep work already, but I'll take you through how we do this and we see if the second time is a little bit easier than the first time. First thing is, is just sawing the rubber out on, on one of the sides here. I use this. Uh, you can use a knife if you want to spend all the time in the world doing this. I don't want to spend all the time in the world doing this, so I'm using this. Just sawing through the rubber, sawing as far in as I can so that this piece is loose. Then when that piece is loose, um, I'm just going to pry this out like that. Uh, I've tried this, I know this works, so we're going to fast forward to this part is off, and then I catch you there. Okay, ne next step is a little bit gnarly. Uh, you see this, this little piece here? We need to, there, there's a little bit of aluminum bush around here. So we gently need to, in the gap here, get a really small screwdriver in there, make a little gap, put a bigger one in there, make a little bit of a bigger gap, and then pry this one out so that we get this piece out. This, this is not easy. OK, 
Okay. So we got this one out. 99% uh, of the marks is on this one. 1% 1 of the marks is on this one, but this is not a bearing surface. I'm not very concerned about that. All the bottom looks really nice. Uh, now comes an even more difficult piece. So inside of this one, there's a bushing all the way around. And then you actually have the, like the carrier of this one in the middle there. It's a metal piece that goes through to this side. And this is kind of molded all together. So there's, there's no real nice way of pulling this crap out of there. So I, I devised a technique that I didn't try on the other one that I'm going to try on this one. Let's see how that goes. And here's the idea that I don't have any idea if it's going to work or not. I'm going to take a bolt. I'm going to push that bolt through this side. On the other side, I'm going to put this, this big hat on it like this. Then I'm going to pull this off so that I pull the center of this one down. And then I'm going to weaken it from this one side until it pops out. Uh, this might be a really stupid idea, but I, I want to see if this works. Let's give it a go. So I'm not sure if you're following what I'm doing here, but essentially I put a bolt through there. I had to take two edges off it to get it in. And then on this side, I have this muff. This is what you use when you pull out wheel bearings normally. And I have a little nut there. I'm going to tighten this so that I push this one through here. And then I'm going to weaken it here, see if it pops out. So my little strategy worked in the sense that it pulled it out. You can see here, it, it pulled that one in. My idea was that this would put some kind of pressure on the rubber. And then I was gonna drill a little bit around here and then just pull it out. Instead, I pulled the center piece out, which is not too bad. Uh, and I put a lot of pressure on this side. So I'm gonna see if I can cut the rubber on this side and get this one to release. For those of you that has done this the proper way, you're looking at me thinking I'm a complete idiot and you should have seen what I did on the other side. It was even worse. Uh, so the, the, the method I used pumped it out halfway. So now I'm kind of stuck in between two, two methods here. And there we go. It was actually really easy to drive it out with a, with a hammer there. Uh, and maybe this is how it's supposed to be done, that you actually drive this out with a hammer, the, the centerpiece there. Uh, I'm going to push the other one out using a, a wheel bearing removal tool uh, rather than the press because it's easier. I can have it down on the bench when I do that. So, so what this is, is again the, the little hat here. Then I have a little piece that is just the right size. And I'm going to put the nut there, put it through, and just pull it out. Okay, here we go. Let's see if this works. And you know what? Stubborn always wins in the end. I just put it on there and I, I tightened it until it came all the way out. I didn't damage this piece, which was really cool. This was a better method than the other one I used. The other one I just put this up in the press and I pushed it out, out of there. I didn't damage that one either, but mm, yeah, that was not a good way. Let's get these clean, start the assembly. Okay, so this one is now as clean as, as I can get it, get it. I used a pressure washer and I actually put it down in the ultrasonic for, for a while. Um, it is uh, clinically clean, aesthetically, it could be nicer. You could vapor blast it and get it completely squeaky clean and then maybe powder coat it. Uh, I know a lot of people do that with great success and it looks fantastic. Uh, I might do that at some other point. Right now, track duty is the focus, right? So we need to get this one in as a first step. Uh, this one has several pieces to it. What I need to do is get into the core of this guy. Uh, and uh, as I get into the core, I can see that I have two of these bushes that need to go in there. And the other one, of course, needs to go in on the other side. So I'm going to press these two together. Uh, I think this is going to be incredibly difficult because 
they're not going to want to go exactly in together like that. So uh, I'm going to do a little bit of thinking, come up with something and then get them in there. Okay, so time to put these bushings in there. What, what I've done is I actually did put it in the freezer. So it should be pretty easy to push it in. What I've also done is, or what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take them one by one. Because the, the challenge is you have the two opposing pieces and then you don't want them to come in too much diagonally because they might get stuck and it might not look very pretty. So I'm going to press them in one at a time. See how that goes. Okay, we got it in there. It looks like it's seated really properly. It was really easy doing it this man way because I, I took one at a go. Uh, moving on, of course, is the center lock system where I am following the same concept as I did over in the front using the Porsche 997 RSR center lock system, which is completely different to the other center lock system that you typically bolt onto the shaft. I explained this in a little bit more detail in one of my previous episodes called Stopping Power. Uh, I'm going to use the same concept here. The difference with using these in the rear compared to the front is in the front, you have to cut the inner piece of the hub here. Uh, in the rear, they fit bolt on, which is really cool. And that's where I started my, my kind of excursion here, finding out that these actually fit bolt on. Uh, somewhat difficult to get a hold of. You have to order these from Porsche Motorsport. They're not available anywhere else. I got a lot of really great help from Robin at Elite Projects with that. That's the company that has done all the, the fabrication work and the cage on, on my car here. So really good help there. Uh, you see the orange piece on this one here. It's just a template bearing that I printed. And the reason I printed it was really just to validate that this thing actually fits and it does fit it has a different offset between here and here compared to the original hub so everything else around it will change which is not an issue for me because i'm changing everything around it anyway uh, i'm going to take this template bearing out of here put a real bearing in do this final squeaky done and then it's time to get this arm onto the car And there we go. The hub is in and this part is now complete. Now that I have these two bushings installed on this one, it is time to put this little thing that holds the uniball in there. This should slide very easily, or not very easily, but this should relatively easily go in there. So I'm just gonna take a little rubber hammer and see if I can get it in there. As soon as it's in, I'm gonna put this little locking ring, and then this goes onto the car. So I tried to knock that one in with a hammer. It didn't go so well, so I'm just using the wheel bearing removal tool here and pulling it in by hand. Uh, this is pretty tough, but it seems to work well. Ah. I'm sure this works a little bit better. And I can see on this one that it has seated just nicely. Uh, the trick is to, to make sure it's really tight so that once you put your locking ring on, this one needs to also seat very nicely yeah i think i got it i'm gonna look at this for a while and see if i really got the, the locking ring to seat there if i did then this is done so it's sitting only in the uni ball now and it's a pretty smooth little feeling to it. I like it.
At this point, we, we start understanding a little bit more about how the, the rear of the 964 works. Because now we have the uniball on the outside there. We have the damper here. We don't have the adjustment plate here. So, so without that one in there, we can see that I can adjust camber here by pushing this one up and down here. And that changes the geometry in here. I can change toe as well and that changes the length to that point. So, and here we go, it is put together and it actually fits on all of those good things, really cool. Uh, the original setup has these spring plates uh, and the spring plates, that's the thing that, that sits here. Uh, the original spring plate has some kind of uniball-ish setup here. Uh, and then it has the camber adjustment down here and then the toe adjustment here, I believe. Yeah, it's, that's, the, that's the way it ties together. Uh, one of the issues with this is that if you want to change one of them without changing the other one, it's very difficult to do so without kind of messing it up. So Porsche came up with this brilliant idea. This is a 935, Porsche 935 style spring plate. Uh, so this one has a uniball here, really nice. Uh, and then it has uh, an adjustment for toe out here, which is completely separate to the camber adjustment that you have here. This one comes from DRS development. It's, it's really delicious, really nice. Uh, I've put the first option in there already. Uh, they have perfected this one a little bit. And what they have done is on the top mounting bolt here, there's actually inserts that you can use because the logic is that this one will pivot around this bolt hole here, pivot around it like this, so that it doesn't move in this direction. And you can move it, put it like that. And you can also put it like that. And you can put it upside down and things like that to, to, to make sure you kind of zone in on the approximate right camber setting. Then you put the, the template in there and then you can adjust around there. And the logic is you're supposed to be able to adjust toe and camber separate from each other. Uh, so I put this one in, I have put it in in the setting that should give me more than three degrees camber. Uh, and the way that this works now is that if I pull here, this should supposedly change my camber setting. I don't know if it does now, I can see that it moves, but since the car is not loaded with this kind of suspension, it looks like actually I have camber in the wrong direction. Um, and then I am supposed to be able to change my toe setting with this one here. And I can see that it moves. Uh, and of course you have to measure and see what it is to really get a good feeling for what it is. And I need to get the car down on the ground so I can see actually how the wheels look. So I'm done with this one. I'm gonna put the other one in and then the rear trailing arms are done. And here we are, it is now all put together and it's got a really nice feel to it, really solid. There's no rubber anywhere, so the settings I give this car, those will be the settings that I run with, in, irrespective of forces going here or forces going there. It's gonna stay where it is, which is really cool. I do have a little bit of rubber left in the old dampers. These are my H&R Club Sports. They are really nice dampers. I'm gonna go for something very different than this car that I can't tell you what it is just yet, but I can tell you though that it will be really cool. Uh, I was gonna finish up the rear brakes today, do the parking brake and so on. Customs, however, and shipment is not really what it's supposed to be these days. So my brake discs, they're stuck in customs. My parking brake caliper, stuck in customs. And I don't know what else is stuck in custom. Yeah, my steering rack is also stuck in custom. So no good. Uh, I need to get a wheel on here. I have my old wheels, which is the, the five log BBS magnesium E28s. Uh, I can still put these on here. I need to make some adaptions. I need to put a brake disc on here. I could, of course. <laughs> just put my front discs on here. Then I've made up for the gap here, but this, this looks completely crazy. And then I have a problem over there because I need four wheels to put it down on the ground. The other alternative, which is what I'm gonna do, is I just printed a little template here. So this has the same thickness as the brake disc. So I put this on here. The next issue I, I will have is that the center lock system for these, the nut, you see it has a taper on it here. 
and the, the BBS wheels I have, they're completely flat. Uh, so I've printed another little template that just has a little groove on it like that. So now this nut is actually flat and I can take my old rims that are not supposed to go here. And now I actually have wheels on the car. Uh, I did start working on the brake setup for this one. I will tell you what I'm going to use. I'm going to use a 997 cup rear caliper with the ceramic pads here on the inside. At some point I will change the color on these so they match the, the front. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I will do that. I have prepared a design of some adapters so that they actually fit to the, the real trailing arm. So this is just about done. Uh, however, I, I, I can't really put it together without the brake disc. So, we got a wheel on this side, I'm going to put wheels on the other side, we're going to bring out my corner scales, put the guy down on the ground. And here we are, another moment of truth in, in this little show of mine, this little challenge I have for myself. Car is going to be touching the ground and we're going to see how much it weighs with all of the things that I have been working with in the car so far. So let's see what we got. We got the rear wheels, the rotors are missing, but the actual brakes are in here, right? Uh, we have the front brakes with the uh, rotors being in the front, of course. We have my new seat, which I haven't showed you yet. I'm going to show that in a future episode. We have the electronics, the pedal box, the shifter. Uh, going over on this side, we see that we have the fuel system, the oil system, the, the ABS, some, uh, some washer fluid. Over on this side, we see that there's a fender missing. That's okay. We have the cooler assembly over there. This is the final way the cooler assembly ended up looking. Uh, I'll, I'll show you some more photos of that later where you go on my Instagram. And what I'm, uh, the way I'm weighing this is that I put my corner scales under it. This is my own design. It's a wireless scale that takes 600 kilos. So what's that? 1200 pounds each something. This is then connected to my computer and we can see the total weight here. We can see the weight of each, each wheel. We can see the front ratio, the rear ratio and so on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this baby down on the ground and then we go back here and we have a look at what this guy says. I've made a guess for myself here in the, in the little chat group that we have, me and my friends here, that it's going to be 500 even. I didn't just come up with that like, like this. I actually calculated the, the, the pieces one by one, made some estimates and so on. And I said, you know what, 500 is a good number. And uh, let's put this guy down and uh, we see what the scale says. Okay, so let's have a look. Wow, it looks really terrible with these narrow wheels on these wide arches. I need to do something about that. Uh, it is officially loose and over here, and you're gonna think I've been cheating here. And I can tell you, I have not. It says 496 kilos. Uh, and I have a challenge for myself to get to 964. So what am I missing to get to 964? Well, actually I'm missing a whole lot of things. Really a whole lot of things. For example, look at this guy. There's nothing here, right? There's no windows. There's no, there's no hood. I do have the hood in there, so I know how much that is. There's no doors. So uh, I, I don't know if uh, the budget I have between the the 500-ish and the 964 is enough because there's going to be quite some pieces going into this. This was a little bit of a different episode this time around. I intended to finish up the, the rear brakes and the parking brake and all that and then show you all the, the cool ideas I had. Uh, since they didn't arrive, I thought I'd show you this instead, show you a little bit where we are, 496, 497. 
that means what is I have 465 ish kilos uh, left to uh, to get all of the other stuff into the car if this guy is going to weigh 964 kilos if you like this and you want to follow the rest of all of these endeavors and then see if I actually meet the target you know what you need to do you need to subscribe to the channel if not write me a comment like the video dislike the video do whatever you want and I'll see you next time